I'm already in perfect physical condition to defend my title. Max Schmeling was a German boxer who was born in 1905 in Kleinlisko in the Prussian province of Brandenburg, the son of Max Senior and Amanda Schmeling. He first became acquainted with boxing as a teenager when his father took him to watch film of the heavyweight championship match between Jack Dempsey and George's Carpentier. Impressed with Dempsey's performance in that fight, Young Schmeling became determined to imitate his new hero. He began boxing in amateur competitions and by 1924, won Germany's national amateur title in the light heavyweight division. Shortly thereafter, he turned professional. Ironically, though he idolized the raging, brawling Dempsey, Schmeling developed a careful, scientific style of fighting that lent itself more to counter-punching. Using this style, he won 17 of his first 23 bouts, 13 by knockout. In 1925, he got into the ring with Dempsey, who was then still heavyweight champion of the world and was touring Europe. Dempsey boxed for two rounds with the then unknown German and, according to a story later told by Schmeling, was greatly impressed. He proved Dempsey's praises correct on August 24, 1926 when picking up the German light heavyweight championship with a first-round knockout of rival Max Diekmann, who had previously beaten Schmeling. The next year, Schmeling won the European Championship by stopping Fernand Delarge in the first boxing match broadcast live in Germany. After defending both titles against Hein dam Goergen, the same year and in 1928, the European title with a first-round knockout of Michel Bonaglia. He secured the German heavyweight championship with a points victory against Franz Diener and decided to chase bigger fights and bigger purses in the United States. Schmeling went to New York in 1928 and, after a ninth-round technical knockout of Johnny Risco, became a sensation. He became the first to win the heavyweight championship by disqualification in 1930, after opponent Jack Sharkey knocked him down with a low blow in the fourth round. Schmeling retained his crown successfully in 1931 by a technical knockout victory over Young Stribling. Do you think you possess the hand that will win the fortune? Well, Jim, I don't know. I hope the best man wins. A rematch in 1932 with Sharkey saw the American gaining the title from Schmeling by a controversial 15-round split decision. In 
in 1933. Schmeling lost to Max Baer by a 10th round technical knockout. The loss left people believing that Schmeling was past his prime. Meanwhile, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party took over control in Germany, but Schmeling never joined the party. The same year, he married Czech film actress Eniandra. In 1936, in their first fight, Schmeling knocked out American rising star Julius. The Nazi party attempted to capitalize on Schmeling's victory for propaganda, promoting Schmeling as a representative of their ideologies. Schmeling was hailed as a hero on his return to Germany. Max had figured that by defeating Lewis, he had earned a right to fight Jimmy Braddock for the title. Well, Jimmy is a very fine gentleman and a great fighter. I admire him very much. And I hope on the day of our championship, the best men will win. But machinations behind the scenes and anti-Nazi protests in New York made the matchup unpalatable to the American audience placing him as the number one contender for Jim Braddock's title. But Lewis got the fight and knocked Braddock out to win the championship in 1937. Schmeling finally got a chance to regain his title in 1938 in the rematch, but Lewis won by technical knockout in the first round. It goes like this, got a butt, love butt down, but a bump, shh, ba -ba -ba -ba. But once I beat Joe Louis, and Joe Louis beat me. Now we even. And I hope the next time we meet again, I beat him again. During World War II, Schmeling served with the German Air Force as a paratrooper. Long after the Second World War, it was revealed that Schmeling had risked his life to save the lives of two Jewish children in 1938. Max's last fight was a 10-round defeat by decision to Rydal vote in Berlin on October 31, 1948, 24 years after his professional debut. His professional record was 56 wins, 10 losses and 4 draws, with 39 knockouts. He was the last German heavyweight champion. After retiring from the ring, Schmeling purchased a Coca-Cola bottling and distribution franchise in Hamburg in 1948, the first in Germany after World War II.
Schmeling developed a friendship with Joe Lewis after their boxing careers ended and provided financial assistance to his former foe in the 1950s. He also paid for part of the funeral arrangements when Lewis died in 1981 and was one of the pallbearers. In 2003, Schmeling was ranked 55 on the Ring Magazine's list of 100 Greatest Punchers of All Time. He died in 2005, at the age of 99. Schmeling was the longest-living heavyweight boxing champion in history.